creativity and compassion are the two features of all spiritual tradition. We have the creativity. We have to now apply it, unleash it, find it, explore it, be bold, be imaginative, be non-judgmental, not about everything, but about people that are trying to do those things. Look at what, listen to what they're saying, disagree with them, agree with them, look at the best options, look at solutions, be willing to let go, be willing to move on, but always committing ourselves to our divine spirit. In today's busy world, how can we find the inspiration, knowledge, and energy to live a healthy and empowered life? If we balance and harmonize our mind, exercise our body, live according to the laws of nature, and connect to spirit, can we find a way to heal, become our authentic self, and live our purpose with love? I am your hostess, Amy Fournier, and welcome back to Awakening Aphrodite. I know if you're subscribing to my show, you are interested in having a healthy lifestyle, which of course involves a healthy diet. How much of your diet includes raw foods? A lot of people don't eat a lot of raw foods, which might mean they're a little bit low in enzymes and have trouble with energy. So Wade's going to help us understand what the role of enzymes are in our diet and why they're vital for us to not only function, but have good energy. Yes, enzymes are the catalyst inside the body. There's over 25,000 different enzymes that science is aware of. And they're an essential component, which are uh, in every animal's diet because they eat their food raw, except humans, we cook our food. And there's advantages to cooking our food, but anything over 114 degrees, it's lost all the enzymes. It's been pasteurized, if it's been irradiated. So almost everything that you get has been irradiated. And that means we have to make our own enzymes to digest our food which takes away from our enzymatic capacity for other things. That's why you get the turkey dinner syndrome. You feel tired and de-energized after eating the biggest meal ever. Why? You don't have enzymes present. So I ran into trouble a number of years ago because I didn't understand this concept. And fortunately, I found uh, Dr. Michael O'Brien and Dr. Edward Howell who educated me on the role of enzymes and optimizing our digestion because it's not what you eat, it's what you digest, absorb, and utilize as well as what you eliminate. And enzymes are a key component of that process. So my business partner, I'm Matt Villain, we set about making the world's most comprehensive enzyme with a particular focus on proteolytic enzymes since uh, undigested proteins are the most inflammatory aspect of our diet that creates a whole lot of problems. And most enzymatic formulas are very low in protease because they're very expensive. They also don't have the full spectrum of proteases. We have five different types that work in all pH levels. Our cultured enzymes are a hundred to a thousand times more powerful than what you would find in food. Plus our enzyme blend of masszymes can, has 17 different types of enzymes. So it will literally break down just about anything. You can check out our site, which has them breaking down a steak in the cup. And yep. it's fantastic. We also have videos where you can throw it in a bowl of oatmeal, a couple caps, and it turns it to liquid in a couple minutes. When you see these products working, it will change your life. But more importantly, when you start ingesting them, that bloated feeling, that heavy feeling after a meal, the inability to eliminate and feel great, or that brain fog when you wake up in the morning will be gone when you use Masslimes regularly. I love it. And Wade, you can use them either on an empty stomach for one purpose uh, or with food for another. Do you want to explain to us the difference why you would go empty versus with food when taking Masslimes? Yes. So uh, I've been an avid uh, fasting person for many, many years. And the benefits of fasting is largely about you free up your enzymatic bank account in order to start healing the body. And so I uh, decided that I would start adding enzymes on an empty stomach and during fast to see if I could accelerate recovery and healing. And it turns out I was able to do so as well as many of my clients to the point today that some of the top surgeons here in Beverly Hills are advocating mass signs on an empty stomach wow. to their clients to increase their outcomes from surgery by recovering. And that's because of the action that they will be absorbed and utilize their system and turn into a systemic enzyme as opposed to a digestive enzyme. And that's the potency and power of our enzyme blends. Well, I'm going to go take some right now. <laughs> that's why it's one of my favorite Bioptimizers product. And you can get yours, you guys, at a discount by entering Amy F10 at checkout. A-M-Y-F is in Fournier 10 at checkout and try your mass zymes. Sauna Space, your product, has changed my life. 
I had been looking for a home sauna for years, 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 years. And I was fortunate enough to hear about you and your product because you were highly recommended by Dr. Macola. Mm -hmm. And I checked it out and the rest is history. I am a firm believer. Right there is my sauna tent. Right there is one of the photon lights. Downstairs is another one. In the kitchen is another one. But uh, I'm just hook, line, and sinker. It's one of the best things I've ever bought for myself. And the, wow. the yeah, ever. Wow. Yeah, I feel so welcome. That's this is why I do what I do. It feels good immediately. Yes. And there's a, definitely a, a, a validation. Yes, this is feeling really good. And then you find as you use it and you s slowly reprogram and shift the body that you you start correcting yourself. Go to our website on sauna.space. You can read some of the reviews. There's folks who have had incredible transformative experiences and changes in their life from the incorporation of this light and heat therapy into their into their daily lives. I am proud to be a part of what we do here. I do feel like it's one of the most effective things available in wellness. I agree. And that's why it's on my website. I am very picky and I get asked to add things all the time. And nope, only stuff that I use personally and has completely <laughs> changed my life for the better. And I couldn't get sauna space up there fast enough. I hope people try it. I'm thrilled that your company has offered a, a nice coupon for everybody. Fit Amy TV 5. All this is on my website under my recommended products e-store. Now let's get back to the show. Welcome back to Awakening Aphrodite with Amy Fournier. This show is about helping you to be healthy and fit in mind, body, and spirit, as well as harmonize your masculine and feminine energy, tap into your intuition, your true source of power, and awaken your authentic self. My friend, I'm excited for you to hear today's show because we take a little different route today. My guest is James Tunney, and He's just amazing. He is a living mystic. Do you know what that is? Well, you're going to find out. He left a very successful career in law and he pivoted and he started to focus on spirituality and artistic development. In fact, he's an extremely accomplished artist. He has several uh, galleries and publications and amazing, amazing artwork. I've seen it personally myself. And he's a poet and he's a very prolific author. My goodness, I think last time I counted, he has like nine books and there's another one in the works. He also has a non-academic uh, writing career and it that covers a wider scope of categories. Although the range is usually linked by two main themes. The first theme is the idea that individuals are primarily spiritual beings that must evolve and must be spiritually self-aware of the nature of consciousness. Don't worry, we get into that in the show. And the second issue that flows from that is that the individual must recognize that they are prey to forces which seek to dispirit them and control their consciousness. James has done a ton of work on studying globalism and AI and the effects on our modern life and how insidious they are. And that's just a super deep dive that you can get into if you study James' work. But all his academic titles in one way or another are about issues associated with globalism. And you can find all his information in the show notes I hope you check out his website. You can at least check out his artwork, which is super cool. And I love this discussion because we talk about empowerment, a word we hear a lot these days, but it's a very important thing to wrap our brains around the nature of empowerment and spiritual consciousness from somebody who is truly an expert on it. We talk about reception and recep receptivity and receiving. And we even get into a little bit about space exp exploration and how we're in a basically a human zoo. Yikes. <laughs> when we even go into, of course, the shadow government and who are they that everybody talks about, what is going on, and uh, humans 2.0, what's the deal? So this is a deep discussion, but I know you love the deep stuff. I love it too. And I love talking to people who've done the work and really have spent years and a lifetime really of a deep dive on their topics because um, 
Boy, I get all my questions answered. <laughs> and if you have any questions or have any guests or topics or anything you'd like to see on the show, hit me up. You can find me on Instagram at FitAmyTV. Send me a direct message. You can always email me. Hop on my email list. You'll get my newsletter where I share my personal stuff. And uh, I'm just really glad you're here. And hey, have you left a review yet? Don't you know that's the best way to support me? I love bringing you this show, but it would really help me out if you feel inclined to leave a review. And if not, don't worry about it. Just enjoy the show. I'm glad you're here. Let's now join my guest, James Tunney. And welcome back, everybody. I'm thrilled to have you here with us today. James, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you, Amy. Looking forward to the conversation. Thank you very much. Me too. My goodness. As I mentioned in the intro for the audience, this is going in a, in a kind of a new direction, probably for most of the people that subscribe to Awakening Aphrodite. I'm thrilled to have you on the show. Our mutual friend, Paul Chuck, connected us. And uh, I can just say on a personal level, I feel the information that you have come across and that you've studied and that you're going to share with us today is really probably the most important thing because this is the big agenda. This is the stuff that we got to take our heads from under the carpet and just pay attention to what's really happening. Um, it might hurt a little bit ripping off this Band-Aid, but I know you're going to share with us your tips as to, all right, now that you know kind of the truth and we're putting on our big girl and boy pants, what can we do about it? Because we are powerful. We can co-create. We have agency, at least for now. So let's not be afraid to just look at the truth and take our power back. So I just wanted to kind of preface that. And again, welcome to the show, James. <laughs> okay, so I did mention a little bit of your background in the intro, but is there anything you kind of want to point out to the audience uh, that really kind of resonates with you today? Uh, no, I, I'm aware that you're very involved in creating a positive uh, framework and, a, and an empowering message. And funnily enough, although we we point to or I point to uh, difficult issues, it's really part of the empowerment process because the nature of empowerment uh, gives you the ability to look problems uh, in the eye f f face face to face and uh, to encounter them so i don't want anything i say to be interpreted as a a message of despair or anything like that it's not in fact the strange uh, oscillations of, of life and the universe means that it vindicates let's say work that like you've been doing or paul check has been doing or uh, other other people that it vindicates and provides the contrast necessary to see well why do we have to understand who we are why do we have to look after ourselves in our body souls and, and the mind and uh, so that's the context and that we shouldn't lose sight of that uh, and in, in many ways it may be that this is the uh, the time of of making a choice and committing yourself fully or to the reality of consciousness or our, our, our spirit and our spiritual consciousness but this is a real thing it's not fabrication it's not a recreation it's not something that's done on the side it's a it's who we are and you know people don't have to have to ex accept that uh but it's it's the reality so any 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 things that people perceive as negative or threatening um are only so when we haven't use the trump card that we have the, the 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 highest power our spiritual consciousness love the concept of thinking it as the trump card and would you say that spiritual consciousness is like our agency like that's like we can be aware of this capacity we have can you kind of further expand what you mean by the spiritual consciousness yeah the uh, there's a lot of debate about what consciousness is and the nature of consciousness. Um, I think that this is a, a hangover uh, from the 19th century when scientism, not proper science, began to say, okay, we're going to put spirit out of the equation. Yeah. We didn't want any any competition. 
And that's where psychology came from as a replacement concept. So in all cultures, in whatever shape or form they've existed, they've accepted that we are spiritual beings, that we are we interact and have interrelationships with other spiritual beings and a whole spectrum of seen and unseen. And, and, uh, and for most cultures, there is some overriding principle, some, some divine consciousness, and we are part of, part of that. The movement through various movements led to an idea that no, not only should there be no religion, but that you, you don't have any spiritual consciousness. And now it's going so far as to say consciousness doesn't exist, that you're some kind of accidental combination of forces that just happened. And that therefore you don't really have any rights or anything as a conse consequence of that. So if, if there has been a move to take spiritual consciousness away and people like Rudolf Steiner uh, have argued that in future they will uh, have a little vaccinate against. Yeah, he predicted uh, everything. That's yeah, going yeah, on now, back in like the fifties, right? It was our forties. Well, no, he he he, he, he was saying this. Uh, he was saying this in the nineteen ten oh, uh, okay. around the turn of the yeah. century. Uh huh. Yeah. He predicted so, exactly um, what's going on. Right yeah. Now. So, so uh -huh. a lot, long history. But one of the reasons he was saying this was because people were arguing for for, for this. So. The reason why that is necessary for them is because spiritual consciousness is the triumphant force that we have. Uh, we are born with, it's, it's our nature. And a lot of our education is intent on taking away the fundamental power that we have. Uh, so in the context that, that you talk about in relation to feminine force or the goddess or whatever, a lot of, that's not something that's made. That's something that is there. And uh, we have to take away those inhi inhibitions and forces which, which uh, prevent us from using or accessing or, or realizing or observing those those forces. But the scientific mindset wants to wants to confuse us and wants to belittle us and wants to reduce us because they know that spiritual consciousness is the most powerful force. It will triumph over other forces. And that's why we have to be drawn into a kind of maya, an illusion that, that we don't have this power and we have to be compartmentalized. So uh, as you suggested from your question, it's our, our agency comes from there. And not only does it come from there, but the development of spiritual consciousness opens us up as receivers to wisdom, which is beyond rational force through intuition, through the power of synchronicity, through other other forms, we can ask, access higher levels of perception that can get, can be directly relevant to our negotiation uh, of the world. And this spiritual consciousness is much more intelligent than the greatest artificial intelligence can can ever be. Uh, it is much more creative. Uh, it, it is because it is part of the forces that have created all the other things. It it is a uh, it, it is the sum is greater than the parts. Uh, so spiritual consciousness is is what we have, and and the greatest failing. It's not complex. The greatest failing that I see and I see among friends is mm -hmm. that they won't take the first step in realizing that they're spiritual beings. That, that a lot of people find it hard now, uh, and especially brought up in certain mindsets too understand that the reality that they are spiritual beings they find that difficult it's been educated out of a lot of people mm -hmm. uh, and once you begin to understand that you're a spiritual being with spiritual consciousness there are the gifts of spiritual consciousness which are uh, accessed and begin to develop and all cultures refer to this uh, and there's different levels the, the cities in the in the in the uh, indian context for example um there the, are spiritual gifts in, in, in traditional Christian, uh, the Holy Spirit or the Great Spirit. Oh, there's, there's these ideas that the powers begin to gi are given to you when you commit yourself to the spiritual path. Or if you want to put it another way, on the hero's journey, you have to commit yourself to the journey with all the dangers. And then the helpers come. It's a strange process. It's, it, it's a counterintuitive non-transactional uh, view of the universe. The universe 
is not transactional in the same sense that humans are. You do something for me, I do something for you. It's, it's not like that. It's, it's a deeper, deeper meaning that is unlocked if one commits oneself to the divine aspect of, of oneself. I don't know if that answered your, your, your... It does, and it makes me think of how I've heard that, and we have to be the ones that open the door to it. We have to be the ones that take the first step towards it, like back to our free will and agency, that we have to kind of say, yes, okay, I'm, I'm taking the, I'm stepping forward, and then spirit meets us halfway. Yes. But, but it, it can't come in unless we open the space. No, because uh, uh, we, if we don't make a commitment to the reality of ourselves, that reality can't work in okay. a way. It's, 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 it's like the, the power of belief, which is, is scientifically proven to be one of the most powerful forces. Sure, the placebo effect or whatever. Yeah, yep. exactly. Mm -hmm. More powerful than pharmaceuticals. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a deep power within us. It's similar to, it strikes me about the... Uh, feminine power as well is that uh, as, as far as I can understand it, the feminine force is, it just is so it's not something that you make or create or construct, it is and the cognitive faculty with social forces stops people from real, realizing that force so in many senses you're taking out obstacles uh, to let the, the, the spring come forth 100% James, that's what that was the birth of this show, Awakening Aphrodite, because I, like a lot of women I know, have kind of lived over-masculinized, at least that was in the past. You know, I was very, very feminine identity, but I, my essence, my expression, my actions, my thinking was very, like, you know, very masculinized, and, and nothing wrong with it, but it was out of balance. I mean, I to the to the expense of my feminine. And now this is all coming back online, which brings me to something I wanted you to share with the audience. In researching you, I loved hearing, uh, you know, your extensive background in academia and politics and law and even working with the, with the UN, right? Mm -hmm. But I loved how um, you kind of put it all aside at one point in your life and you decided you got very clear on your values and what was meaningful in your life. And you decided to be, leave it all and, and stay at home while your wife was working, take care of the children. And you started painting, you became an artist. You shared that it was in that space. Once you did that and you created the space that it opened the door to allow the divine inspiration, the connection, the messages, and now the pivot of your life, your life's work and everything that you've developed, learned, and shared since. But you were the one who had to create the space. And what I'm getting at for, for everybody is that was a feminine action that you, you didn't, uh, you know, will yourself through it and read a million books when you were wondering, and what should I do next? Like, like I would have done over masculinized thinking, thinking, okay, what do I have to do? Who do I have to meet? What conference should I go to? What book do I have to read? I'll start meditating. That's all to the masculine. You instead pulled it way back. You painted, which obviously is the, the feminine and you allowed the yourself to receive it, to come to you. And I love that. So please share with us that experience and what we can learn from it so we can do the same. You may not know what the right thing to do is, but you can know what the wrong thing is. And once you realize what the wrong thing, it makes it easier to make choices. And as you're saying that, I'm reminded of the uh, Lorenz van der Post and others went out and, and worked with the Bushmen of the Kalahari. And there's a famous documentary made about the Bushmen of the Kalahari and how they how they catch uh, or how they find water in a time of drought. And it, it, you may have seen it, but what they do yeah. is what they used to do uh, was they knew that the only pe the only beings that knew where the water was in times of drought were the were the baboons. Uh, so yeah, they had yeah. to get the baboons to show uh, show where the water is, but the baboons are very secretive. So what the bush <laughs> the bushman would do, well, was, funny. He, he, the, he would walk up uh, to a kind of sandbank where the baboons were, and he would dig a hole, and he would 
he would put some uh, nuts in the hole and make sure in the full sight of the, the baboons and the trees, and then he would walk away. Now, he knew that they were very curious. So one would go up and they would stick their hand in to get the, to get the, the nuts inside. Uh, now, the, the hole was big enough to let the hand come in, but when they closed their fists, it would lock in. So in order to uh, release themselves, the baboon would have to open their fist and let go of the nuts. But psychologically, they would not let go of the nuts with the result that they would trap themselves in the sandbank with their, with their hand. So then, the, then the, uh, the, the bushman would come along with a lead around the neck of the baboon and take them to a tree. And they would, put, they would leave them there by the tree and they would put a, a block of salt beside them and leave leave the baboon. So the baboon, baboon gets hungry, and after a while they eat the salt. And of course, um, then the, bab, the the bushman comes back. He uh, the, the baboon is very thirsty. Uh, he he lets go of the leash, and the baboon will run to the secret water source and reveal where Perfect. it is. That's well, brilliant. Brilliant, yeah. It, 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 traditional ecological knowledge, if you like, but uh, but in all those cases, in, in those cases, the action is dependent on knowledge or the behavior of the baboon themselves. So letting go is a crucial is a crucial thing. You want to hold on to something because yeah, I, I'm not going to let go of this. But people will fight to hold on to things that are not significant. And as they say, there's no pockets and shrouds. When we go to the next world, we're not going to be bringing anything with us. It will be what we have. What we, what we have is what we are. It's what's inside us. It's our essence. It's our spirit. And that is the transcendent force. So I, I, I was disillusioned when I, I, for a whole range of factors, not least, for example, when I studied international law and read all, uh, all the supposed rules about how things were meant to be and human rights and then you had uh, war in Iraq and that, uh, etc., uh, and that I, uh, nations could, uh, you know, construct uh, justification to intervene, which was, uh, you know, basic. It was basically a tissue of lies. It defeated all the all the claims to international justice that that existed. And then uh, when it came to we're having a, a family, I said, okay, well, I I I personally think that the sending kids to school if you have the option too early is is is, is not great so i said i'll stay at home i wasn't interested in the, in in the career my wife career was 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 going well so i said i'd stay at home so it was a i mean i didn't know what, where i was going what the purpose was i had an idea that i would write and paint i had painted always but i said i'll concentrate a bit more and, and i'll write in a more creative way that was the intention um again but as a, a peripheral thing because when the kids are going around your attention is is focused on them now i found it very liberating i know i've read all this stuff about you know people being at home lonely and all that kind of stuff i didn't feel any of that I'd, I'd worked in the university for years going in every day where you have people in front of you and i, I knew a priest uh who, who he talked about a thing called people's sickness where you mean an or audience sickness, meaning when you're facing people all the time, it can get very draining, you know. Sure. And energy uh, out, get, out, out. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so the the self kind of has to has to get a hard face, if you like, to to deal with that. But there's not, uh, there, there was all that. I, I thought it was a good time, and but you're right. Reception is a key point. It's a, letting go is a key point, and reception is one possible route or probably the root of the word Kabbalah. Uh, it's that that's what it means in in in, uh, in Hebrew and in, in oh. one reading of it. So and that indicates the, the, the fact that a lot of spiritual transformation, metanoia and, uh, and uh, development is based on opening yourself up. Now, opening mm -hmm. yourself up in some kind of structured, disciplined way as well. Yeah. But what that did for me was create space. Now, you kind of don't know. You couldn't rationally work out, oh, I need space. And I don't think you can work out that way. You have to go uh, with an intuition. And you also, 
So it was a strange process as well, because I, when I came to Sweden, I, I didn't speak Swedish. Now, when you're when you're in a country where you don't speak the language initially, uh, so yeah, you have to learn it. You're infantilized by that process. You are you can't be oh I'm just I'm just you know you could do that in Sweden because a lot of people speak English, so you could do the the English speaking guy all the time and maintain your status, but you lose status when you're you know, you're kind of fumbling through the words at the start when you're speaking like like a child your position diminishes quite quickly in that sense and if you if you say well I'm a, a lecturer in university senior lecturer I do this and all that people treat you in a different way if you say well I'm minding the children that changes your status changes now I found that very liberating I found that a lot of people would find that difficult I found that liberating because it was I was letting go of the nuts <laughs> the, the baboon is holding on to the equivalent of that. Mm -hmm. So it was a letting go. I found it really, you began to see, you see things clearer when uh, you see how people see you uh, or don't see you. So that, that, that that's a revealing thing as well. Yeah. So you begin to realize that because we create a persona ourselves, but other people create a persona of us as well. And when you divorce yourself from that, it's easier to see who you are, especially when you commit yourself to, to who you are. So I, I didn't really know what the, what the answers were. But what happens, I'd always been interested in spirituality, but I'd, I'd put that aside in many senses because I was so preoccupied with you know all the gory details of how the world worked that that wasn't wasn't really there in the same way. But what I began what what began to happen over a period of time, and I I do think also. That say looking looking at the children, for example, you can't. You're not paying attention to yourself. Your your ego is parked somewhere else because, by definition, looking at things around, you come out of yourself. You you kind of project yourself out of your own introspection, mm -hmm. uh, and that was now that I look back was very 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 useful. So as you said, it's letting go, and that letting go clears the decks for reception, and it became very specific. As I began to kind of, I, I would say, take poetry from the air. It's like the, 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 mm. in, in Ireland, some of the, some of the people who wrote uh, music, fiddle tunes, said that they picked, them, they plucked them from the air. You know, uh, that, that that's what happens when you become receptive. Sorry for going on too long with that. I love it. No, this is so key, James, because again, this show is you know holistic health and wellness, but re also really helping. The world, mostly women are subscribing, but helping the world get back in touch with our feminine, you know, and particularly in America, I'm not sure about Ireland and Switzerland and other countries as much, but, you know, the driven, ambitious, you know, like go, 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 push, 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 and the whole woman's lib and all that was great, but, you know, women trying to do it all and wear the pants and you know, it's like we just, so many of us just lost that whole other half of ourselves. So this is very helpful for us to try to, just to, to hear a living example, and particularly a man, which is beautiful. Um, is there any other information that's kind of feeling like you want to share about helping us be more receptive and trusting? Because I'm hearing a lot of uncertainty you were going through. You didn't know, but you were good with it. A lot of people don't like the uncertainty. That's right. They, they don't like uncertainty and they don't like a, a loss of status or a perceived loss yes. of status. Yes, yes, and respect. Yeah. That's, yep. that's, what, that's, really, that's really what you have to uh, uh, what you have to be able to persist with. To be able to say, yeah. well, yeah, I don't have this, I'm not that. Not to, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't put in a whole load of I never put in a qualification. Oh, but I used to do this or I used to do that. I, right. I never did that. And it was very, very interesting. And it was also one yeah. paradox which I found interesting was that I remember going to a playground with, with one of my daughters. I think it was the eldest one. And over here, they start very early. In, in Sweden, they start very early at, with the, with the with this kindergarten. It's very subsidized. So, you know, it's no problem putting your child in early in the morning and taking them late in the evening. Now, I wasn't doing that, obviously. Uh, but I remember being at the playground. There was another woman with her child who, who was younger. And she said, is that uh, or is your daughter in kind of kindergarten? And I said, no, she's at home. And then she started off 
oh well she should have her own life and she's but there was a lot of this kind of there was a lot of opposition in the way yeah. kind of subtle kind of saying what are you mm-hmm. doing that for why don't you let them go and socialize now kids babies uh, don't have the capacity to socialize uh, at, at a certain age they have to have some kind of base in which to 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 build their esteem all mammals or the more intelligent mammals have a longer period of connection with some some uh, usually the mother uh, but uh, some force that's that's there some consistent force um so so that was quite interesting uh, and i see for example now the holy grail is to provide you know free health care you know supposedly for women uh, in in a lot of countries, like, like now the current thing is, oh, we will give you health care or not to have free care for children, you know, from, from the earliest age. Now this is not a liberation. This is a trap. The purpose of that is to break the bonds between children and and family. That 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 this is a, an objective that has been stated for over a hundred years to to break down the family. So things that are presented. So so what I would say in this is. A lot of the women's liberation movement, in my my view, has been a trap. Basically, I, I think there's a, 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 a trap, and it will continue to be so because if we go back to the writings a hundred years ago, they said in order to achieve a kind of a, well, they didn't use the word scientocracy, but rule by scientific elite, they would have to break down the nation state, religion, and the family, and they're yeah. succeeding. In all of them, uh, people don't realize how, how how much this has gone. We're living in, in in a massive illusion. There's a massive a massive brainwashing campaign going on, and uh, it has been very successful. It has been incredibly successful. Um, but once you begin to understand it, one doesn't necessarily one was not going to go back and be fooled again by it. But it's so deep, so pervasive. Uh, so effective that people repeat the things the things they know and they lose their power they lose their spiritual power they lose their feminine power they lose uh, they lose their capacity the thing that is of the rest and and the last point i would mention um so when you do work as well in spiritual terms uh, on the body and 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 uh, and that is, is very very important i know it's very very important as a base and foundation in in your work there is in all of this a great misanthropy, a hatred of the person and of the body. There's a great hatred of biology behind this movement towards mechanizing the body. There's some deep thing that has gone wrong, some deep anti-biological force which wants to mechanize the human body. Now, we see a lot of technology as neutral, but when you look at what the plans have been, the plans are to marriage humans with machines. I, I, I used to study, from, from the, the time I was young, I used to study things about the future. And I used to read about this, that some of the greatest thinkers that I, I, I believe were telling, accurately predicting the future, said that the future of evolution would be merger of humans and machines. And I thought, who would want that? I, I, never, I never understood. I, I misread that. I never, my intuition never believed that people would give their humanity away so so cheaply, um, so that again indicates the importance of having a necessary, proper, healthy relationship to yourself, to your body, to without uh, to your our bodies, soul. with all the with all the, the the weakness as part of the holistic. Very important. All right, so let's let's go there, James. Let's. I know you've worked extensively. You're one of like the world leaders on this whole topic, but let's let's do the 101 for the audience of what you're talking about because I know this went back. A lot of your research goes yeah, back yeah. Out like over a hundred years or so. So the big plan of the globalists and the tech giants, like you you mentioned, this massive brainwashing campaign. Yeah, I totally agree. Not that it matters, but I totally agree. Um, but we don't even know we're being brainwashed. But You've ex- you've studied this extensively, so can you give us? And I know it's probably not even fair to ask you, but can you do your best to the person going? Wait, what did you just say? A brainwashing campaign about what? So, in your research, your life's work, really, what did you start finding? Like, where were you getting the proof, so to speak, to make that kind of statement? 
Well, well basically, uh, I found out because they told us, but nobody was paying attention to what they were they were saying. Uh, and this often happens that people will tell you things, bad things they're going to do or whatever, and people don't pay attention to it. And yeah. And then as some said, oh, so you were serious when you said that. It's a strange, it's a strange quality. You can even see this in, in strange in police context where uh, people people say what they have done or did and, and they're not believed. It's, it, it's, it's a strange phenomenon. But uh, if you take, for example, a figure like H.G. Wells that people would be familiar with for, for various books that, that he wrote, like The Time Machine and that. He was also a, a very, very significant thinker. So he wrote books like The New World Order. That's the name yeah. of the book. You know, it's, it's, it's called a conspiracy theory or the open conspiracy. Uh, people say yeah. you're a conspiracy theorist if you say this. That's what the name of the book is. And the open conspiracy uh, was a conspiracy to rule the planet with a scientific elite. Uh, and that would be that new world uh, order. So the and order when affairs. Was this, when was this written? Excuse me. When... Uh, he wrote in the twenties, and he wrote okay, so... uh, in nineteen forty. So, so back so, in the twenties, uh, someone the 20s was talking was the about key this. Time. And yeah. why was the twenties the key yeah. time? Everyone knows what a, the colonial, the European colonial system was. But what happened, I believe, after for the First World War was they said, and particularly because they had revolutionary movements in Ireland and that. They said, OK, well, we're not going to be able to control the world in the same way with military force exactly in the future. Military force, yes, but not in the, in the same way. So we will shift to a different form of control. In 1943, Winston Churchill said that the, the future empire will be the empire of the mind. So the idea would be instead of control in the space and area, we'll control the human mind. And all the military industrial complex um, was was kind of directed towards that in the last well, nearly a hundred years now. Um, it became it, it, and, and the idea of cybernetics, which is about governance, is about control of humans. So we invest our money in the uh, in the state, in the military, the uh, and and research, which ultimately ends up at controlling us. It's redirected towards the controlling of human be uh, behavior. But what what happened in the 20s was, it was very, very strange. The the It was the epitome of this movement uh, after Darwin, Darwin, Darwinism and evolutionary idea became an ideology. And the upper class in Britain was very interested in eugenics, in breeding. They'd always been interested in breeding. If you want to be in the hierarchy, you have to have a particular relationship. You have to be, you know, the son or daughter of a particular the person. Bloodline. The hierarchy. Yep. Mm -hmm. They're very interested in breeding horses and breeding dogs. And, and they wanted to apply that logic to humans, basically. And particularly because they didn't like all the the poor people that were coming from the empire into London and places. They, they, they began to think of applying these principles to humans. So by the 1920s, the combination of a number of scientific forces uh, led to people like H.G. Wells saying uh, that we would have a new world order with a scientific elite who would make decisions for everyone. And in order to do so, he says in the books quite clearly, have to abolish the nation state, religion and the family, because they are forces that will stop this global thing. And they would they would do it in particular by establishing regulation of global health and, and a, a bio director that would re regulate uh, health. So the, the kind of basis, the functionality would be through the regulation of human health, which of course has implications in relation to uh, what we see happening now with the World Health Organization. And one book that explains it remarkably is a book by a man called J.D. Bernal. He was actually Irish, he was a crystallographer, so his his work was trying to look at the structure of of certain substances. Uh, so he, he was a res very respected scientist. So he wrote a book called The World, the Flesh and the Devil in 1929. He was also a very uh, ardent Stalinist. Um, 
and even when Stalin died, he wrote an obituary, you know, praising Stalin even then uh, as a great scientist, because, of course, Stalin was engaged in scientific socialism early on. But what Pernal said, it lays it out quite clearly, he said that scientific corporations would take over the world by stealth. It's quite, quite simple. Once they attain power, they would be able to implement the goals. The goals were to transform humans into uh, into silicon, into uh, into to change biology into a machine, basically. Now, I mean, it seems crazy, but when you understand this. This is 100 years ago. Basically, they were saying this was the... So this has been under the water under the covers all the while, last hundred years, and we just happen to be living in a time where it's starting to surface because well, of transhumanism. Yes, yeah, yeah. And- but it hasn't, it's always been, I mean, it's been open. I mean, the book wasn't secret or anything like that. So the idea was, and again, this was, it comes from a very particular left brain mindset yeah. that, that, that fears the body, that fears mortality because there's no spiritual concept. So once you take the spiritual concept, you're left with purely material perspective. And then the people that have a purely material perspective don't want their life to end because they, you know, they, well, that's it. Where, you know, yeah. scary for them. It's kind of in, in, infantilized as well. Um, but so, so, so there was this transformation and, and also there would be ectogenesis where all the, What's that? yeah, where, where basically it means that all babies would come from test tubes. Oh my there wouldn't God. be any natural births. It's like now, the Matrix. You say, well, that's, that's kind of ridiculous. You see it in the, the Matrix. Yeah. Uh, it's in Aldous Huxley. That was because they intend to do so. There was this an article nuts. in the Daily Mail, I'm not recommending that, but just as an example, which said, we need to talk about ex- ectogenesis. Ectogenesis. Do we? Yeah. But what they're saying is, you need to get used to this because this is part of see w- people don't understand we're coming to the end of humanity as we know it on this yeah. trajectory mm-hmm. humans don't exist in the same way in this country well they're changing dna they're cha- they i mean it and it started even with uh, gmos genetically modifying our food and our animals and and uh, us, <laughs> I mean, we're eating it. So it's it's changing our DNA and all these shots and stuff are, are, are um, you know, messenger RNA reprogrammers and it's happening. It's happening now. Yeah. But, but I mean, things like, you know, feminine, they're kind of irrelevant in a way. Yeah. This, day this is the big, this is the big kahuna. Away. Uh-huh. They're yep. being taken away. And yep. Yep. Uh, if you, if you, for example, uh, you will notice this very soon. If you begin to say, well, I think the human race is special, you will be a, a human racist, a speciest. That this, this is happening already. This is what they're, they're saying at the top levels of these scientific corporations, like Google and, and all these. So, well, you, you lost me there. What, what do you yeah. mean you'll be an in? Say that again. If you say, I think humans are more special than orangutans for example oh okay they're, they're nearly, well, you will be that will be regarded as a kind of a, 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 you being a human racist a speciest who who in some way is bad for that by okay. privileging humans this is really where it's going and, and it will happen as well that cyborgs and that there there's already campaigns to gain rights for them what so, the freak so wait a robot <laughs> yeah, rights yeah. for a robot or, right yeah that, that, that that's happening and there are there are people arguing oh, there's a chap now i'm not saying there's a chap in spain i was talking to someone who met him recently and he, he has this antenna in his in his in his skull so he can see different colors Wait, now, is I don't, a person if, a person yeah, yeah. with there's, an there's antenna a, there's a lot of this there's a, yeah so i mean i support people's rights to do their own things but i don't want them doing it to me Right, you know, so, so that's the difference. So if you want to do things with your own body, good luck to you. You know, I support totally your agree. right to do so. Yep, totally agree. Uh, uh, but 
that's part of uh, claiming right for cyborgs, i.e. people who have been adapted by technology. But the movement has well started to uh, to to gain uh, rights for cyborgs and machines, and also uh, rights for animals. So we can, we can see that that is justifiable in, in different ways. But the purpose is to dehumanize and depersonalize us. So what is happening is that there is a massive assault on the idea of the human person of yeah. the idea of the that we have assumed we have assumed these ideas that have been worked out from the greeks the romans through the christianity the valuing of the individual the value we assume that they're just there that they exist and they've always existed yeah. then that's not true they were they were built up over a period of time uh i've just traveled the last month in in europe and uh, it's become it's becoming clear that europe is moving into a, a a probably post-Christian context. And people say, oh, that's great modernization and that. But with that, they don't realize how much of the things that they accept as their culture and go out the window uh, as well. You know, ideas of values, ideas of rights. They didn't exist in other societies uh, in, in the same way. So that's all part of a plan to dismantle the social fabric, to undermine the existing traditions of whatever type they are. But what they so, so what they said was scientific corporations take over the world uh humans will be transformed into uh into uh, this different form into silicon so they would therefore gain immortality now this was also there in the russian cosmos uh, in, in the 1800s the russians were thinking along these lines as well and they are uh, the, the, uh, i won't tell you the more daft ideas but, yeah. because it will make it sound absurd and and will 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 take away from the significance of what's actually what's actually happening. Uh, so the scientific corporations take over, transform humans, they gain kind of immortality. But also, I just have to interject, also only select humans, not everybody. This isn't like we're going to do this for all people. They pick well, the ones. Here, here is the, here I'm is the, sorry, yeah, I, didn't, here I is just have rub. to throw that in. Uh, yeah. The scientific elite yeah. uh, will be able to escape the planet and that's what's well, that's what science, that's what space exploration is about yeah so space okay. exploration is a key bit so space exploration enables the elite to go off now yes. if you're on the earth and you say no well i don't fancy this i don't want to be it was made clear and he, he makes it very very clear very specifically that those who will not go along with the program will live in a human zoo that's the expression uh, a human zoo and they can be experimented upon without their consent and probably uh, without their knowledge. Which That's is the, what's the happening. Human zoo. This yeah, is what they, scientists They say are human zoo. Well, even now, there are German philosophers which, which are talking about the mention part. These are mainstream philosophers. They believe that we live now. They're not criticizing it. That we're living in humans. You, Desmond well, Morris, wrote about that. The humans. Well, we were. we know we didn't have uh, informed consent with the last batch of what was called a vaccine. It wasn't there yeah, was but, no informed but, consent. But, but it's deeper than that. You do, you don't have any rights in in the future. There's no rights, nothing to appeal to. There's no logic to appeal to. There's yeah. no higher force to appeal to. So in, in, wow. these are irrelevancies. They're yeah. irrelevancies. You know, in the in in the picture. Uh, that's right. In the current state of affairs, you're correct. Uh, but it's so deep this 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 thinking that it it it, uh, it doesn't have any opposition in this. There's no moral qualms. There's no ethical restraints on this. Um, so uh, as well as that, a key aspect in this was the idea of ex expanding human intelligence. They're obsessed with this idea, and that's where a lot of the transhumanist things comes from. But yes, it's clear that there will be this elite. The elite the scientists the technicians the people that run the corporations the technocrats and then you have all the rest so all the yeah. good things that they think they will get immortality life extension space exploration are for the uh, elite uh, and here's the strange thing there's a lot of people in uh, say the countercultural movement who think that there are certain heroes liberation if you'd like to say uh, tim de leary terence mckenna but if you look at what they say, their agenda was totally consistent with what the guys said 100 years ago. 
Terence McKenna, he talks in terms of the same things about prosthesis to change the human, that the humans were, were only a precursor to what's coming. And people don't hear that in them. Wow. They keep telling me about the wonderful stuff because one of, here's, here's, the, here's the city. What do you mention anything about oh, taking drugs, psychedelic drugs, minds expanding? You seem to win a certain class of people over. They see you as involved in their liberation or they see you as, as, as helping them. But psychedelics was always part of the process of maintaining control, as, as Huxley explained, to get people to love their servitude. And um, when a person is talking about that triune belief of we believe in space exploration, immortality, you know, physical immortality, uh, preservation of, of, of human consciousness after death uh, and uh, intelligence maximization. They're talking the same terms that Bernal was talking about. So even people that I like a lot, uh, when you look at them, you see they are Robert Anton Wilson, for example, a lot of people like him. I like him a lot as well. But he was one of the first people. His daughter was killed tragically, as far as I understand. And he, he had her... Uh, or head preserved in in the in the cry, cry, cryogenically. And you say, well, Whoa. this is not really consistent with a belief in the human spirit. If you believe that the and human soul spirit, and your soul, the soul, yeah, 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 then you don't really go for this kind of stuff. Uh, so a lot of wow. a lot of countercultural forces are not countercultural forces. They're part of the establishment. You got to uh, listen to difficulty. their whole message. A lot of people don't 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 like to hear that, and they resist that, and they will defend they will defend them. It's like selective hearing and confirmation it's bias. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. remarkable. It's remarkable. Yeah. And then then if I say that, it yeah. will it yeah. will cause oh yeah. yeah you don't understand you're just yeah. some kind of I don't traditionalist yeah. or something. Well, and plus uh, James, a lot of it is even this discussion here. I mean, a lot of it is just dismissed because it seems so crazy to people. They just completely write it off, which of course I understand. We're talking about cyborgs and, you know, cr some crazy stuff, but it's the same thing if you talk about, you know, like alien races or, uh, you know, like the work of David Icke or whatever. A lot of this stuff is, and not to mention, it's very uncomfortable. People, are, it's so overwhelming and anxiety provoking for so many people, and they feel very disempowered to do anything about it. That that kind of justifies their turning away. And you know they're already overstressed, they're already over busy. Yeah, tell us, like, why should we not look away? Yeah. Well, I think if you look at uh, people like C.S. Lewis, and he, he wrote the Screw Tape Letters, which is a dramatization of a demon training in his uh, his nephew to become a demon it's it's a funny funny book uh, yeah. so he puts it in in but so the, so the demon is educating the 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 lower, the lower one his nephew about how to how to corrupt people and he he, he consistently right. says or he says that the safest road to hell is this the, the slow decline the soft kind of gradual decline that's the same yeah. now uh Really, at a certain point, when you keep on, when one keeps on giving in, acquiescing all the time, you have to pay the consequences in the end. When, when one begins to, I believe it's a spiritual universe, and in that there is truth and justice, and uh, that's written in the universe. If you look at near death experiences, yeah, you know, when people go and they come back and they realize the effect they've had on other, it's justice is in the universe. And Martin Luther King said, "It's a long justice operates on a long arc of history. It may take time to work, but it, it will, mm. it will write itself." But you don't have to deal with the whole universe. You only have to deal with your own life. You only have power over what you have power over, and what you have yeah. power over is your own soul and choices that you make. That's all you have power over. So, what you have to do is be master or mistress of your own kingdom. Your, your own soul that's that's okay. within you. you you have to do that that's all you have to do you have to realize that you you have spiritual power that you were a reflection a fractal a hologram of the universal whatever form you want to call it divine force that that you are that 
You are that. You have it. That's it. You have to really focus on uh, on that. And you mentioned, I heard you talking about meditation and not being into meditation as far as I remember. I understand that. I, I prefer to walk or to swim Me or, too. To, or to do something. Like Me too. But in relation to mantras, thinking, all you have to do is remember that you are it. You are the divine force. It's in you. That's that's what all the spiritual traditions say. And once you re, once you realize that, uh, well, then you you will understand that uh, your rights come from that. Your 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 esteem comes from that. Your sense of self comes from that. Your power comes from that. And that power will not tolerate this mad, crazy reduction uh, of the individual. Now, if you say, well, these people only really want what's good for us. This is uh, convenient for us. This is useful. This is helpful. This is progress. This is the future. Uh, you will pay the price for it. You will pay the pr price for it. You can't get away all the time doing this. So there is a point in all the spiritual traditions. They also mention about this choice at certain stage there's a choice you make you know so or come out from among them or even in the marian apparitions there's a choice and, and some of the marian apparitions for example there's these texts about about at some stage all the people in the world will get a chance to make a choice about what they're committed to but the choice today is to believe in your spiritual consciousness or to allow other to allow corporations to take it, uh, and that's mm -hmm. what they're after. They, they, as George Carlin, the comedian, said, they want everything. You think they're going to stop now? Oh, they've taken it. No, they want everything, including including your soul. And the question is, do you want to give that to them? Uh, I'm not not <laughs> not doing it. Yeah. Uh, if other people want it, that's their choice. Uh, and you may not you may not believe that there's life after death that consciousness doesn't persist um uh, and therefore be willing to make changes on the act but ultimately it will still manifest on the planet that you you will make a decision to be a slave or to be master of or mistress of your own own destiny um so uh, that that's that's where the the choice the volition the commitment uh, comes in and uh, also, that's where your power comes from, because everything can be taken away from you. We know that through disease, suffering, the nature of life, but you cannot take away that consciousness of yourself, that spiritual thing. That's that's the last and the first thing. This is what was there before us and after us, which will be, and that will survive, and 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 that will, even in this incarnation, will be the center of us. So that's what we can't give away. And that's what they they want ultimately, or they do not see it as being a reality in you know in the most charitable reading of their uh, their belief system. Wow, yes, wow, wow, wow. And I'll say, you know, there's more of us than them too. If everyone took that um, resource that we have inside ourselves and acted on it, like you say, I love that, you're master or mistress of your own universe. There's, And, you know, for that matter, who are they, James? Like, you know, who? it's like the shadow government. Like, there is no real, you know, in America, certainly no, you know, there's no, like, what we think is running the country is not running the country. I mean, we know that. But what would you say, like, who is the they? Who is behind this and, and the why? Because they're they're just raping the earth to get out of here, and then then what? Just they're going to live forever, whoever they are. Who are they? I've tried to provide a very specific historical uh, analysis. It's uh, uh, and in particular, I relate it to the colonial powers in Europe. Okay. In particular, uh, the British Empire. So where did the British Empire go? Right. It was the idea that it just disappeared. It didn't disappear. It trans transmuted into different uh. forms. Mm -hmm. So if you look at California, for example, a lot of the empire shifted to California. There's no there's no doubt that California is uh, part of the great the munitions center of, of the United States and uh, the world in, in that sense. There was a shift of empire to include uh, California because California was important in moving to the Far East, taking Japan and that. So the, the empire 
transformed itself, not just the British Empire, but you can include the, the Swedish, the Dutch, the French, the elements of the pre-existing elite transmuted themselves into a new form through global organizations. But the, the British were the best at it. The British Empire were the best. They were involved. They were very successful in industry, in their organization, in their ability to uh, conduct rule or to, to make rule systems. And that so the Anglo sphere, as, as Chomsky said, the, the the U.S., America, Australia, New Zealand is still a key part, but has expanded to include satellites, Saudi Arabia, and all, all the elites are brought together uh, in in groups like the World Economic Forum, through systems like the World Trade Organization, even things like the European Community, the European Union, the UN uh, Council for Relations. All the elite, it's so it's global now. It's no longer. A identifiable class. It has yeah. to have everybody involved in it. Yeah. Um, so they are the they are the people who want power, uh, who can sometimes. There's a lot of gophers. There's a lot of people who are useful idiots. And they're at this stage. They're mainly put into the political <laughs> arena. And that yeah. these are people who are unscrupulous, probably screen to be uh, pathological you know that they, mm -hmm. they they don't have any they, uh, they they can test now and identify that people don't have certain qualities and they're yep. great for doing the, the, the job yep. they can be sucked in the technicians the technocrats uh, and the people who have a very dominant left brain idea and they certain people like predictability they like the so we talked about when you were saying about the uncertainty there's a lot of people that don't like uncertainty. Uh, it's a kind of deep thing ingrained in them. They don't like things to be uncertain. They want the world to be predictable. And I think there's a deeper kind of spiritual malaise that enforces that on, on the world. But in simple terms, it's the old imperial force that desires to have the master race and slaves, in a, and it's in a different form. This was the same movement that was behind Nazism and Stalinism, and communism and fascism, uh, which purported to be scientific. Both cases, they claim to be scientific. They claim to be doing something for evolutionary. It's the same route that took place, or that, that really was came from people like Nietzsche and that. The idea of the Superman and Superwoman. We're going to create the Superman and Superwoman. And if you have things like mercy or compassion, that's weakness. That's a weak, if you want feminine value. We have, to, we have to eliminate all that mm -hmm. unmercy for you, you know, and, and mercy in that is a compassion, are key elements of all the spiritual traditions. So the day are those people that are subscribed to this agenda of becoming a technical, technocratic, scientific elite, and all the groups, not 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 huge amount of people, the people that are necessary to do their bidding. Yeah, to, the minions. To, mm -hmm. The minions, yeah. A few uh, are coming to mind. To, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's the, 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 the whole class, a whole class of them now uh, that will, will serve the purposes, that will uh, do the bidding, that, 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 that have no compulsion, no moral uh, autonomy. Yeah, uh, they sold their soul. They've, they've sold their soul. And that, that, that's a change. It hasn't always been the case that politicians were like that. That yeah, is yeah. happened in the last generation. I know that. Quite specifically, I can see the transformation. It was part of the the plan, if you like. Mm -hmm. So it's certainly not. So when people start saying, "Oh, the Jews is this," you know, I, I don't have any time for that because there's a very specific analysis about uh, yeah. what happens and about the nature of it. And it's clear. It's historical. It doesn't identify any particular group, save, say, for example, imperial forces, as, as I do the scientific elite in Britain, in particular, were were, were important, uh, and that they actually had very close connections with uh well the modern the gates and his family and uh, it's the, the connections are there through places like cold spring harbor through the investigations of of uh dna i mean you can trace it it's very very clear it's not anything which is secret and gates's connection to planned Pan parenthood and exactly that whole yeah, thing, yeah, the yeah, eugenics yeah. program i mean exactly his, his it's father. all there. To totally consistent it's utterly yeah. consistent and it's right there in plain sight like you were saying earlier it's like they're these people are telling you who they are and 
people are just cherry picking what they're paying attention to. Oh, but he gave so much to charity and it's like, okay. Here's well. the point, uh, the last the last point on that, to come back mm. to the question asked. Yeah. Uh, more of us than them, I've come to the conclusion that there's not. Uh-oh. Uh <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. Because people have made choices. Yeah. And are making choices. Yeah. But choosing, in my view, I'm not uh, talking about, I believe hell is of your own creation. Most hells are of our own creation. But mm -hmm. it's a reflection. And this process continues after that you can put yourself in a place where you won't go anywhere from it. It's, it's, you won't let go. So that many people are choosing the roads to whatever way you want to you want to call it spiritual perdition whatever way you want to put it they're choosing that you cannot you cannot not be yourself the flower cannot refuse to to blossom in a way it's the ident it's the ident our spiritual nature we have to go through that spiritual efflorescence life and death but we do have to go through a process it's what the spiritual journey is so if you say no i believe in that no what we're doing is outsourcing our individual autonomy. And when you do that, you are literally possessed. Now, it doesn't have to be by demons or whatever, but you're possessed by an ideology, by a force, by a technology, by a, someone else's viewpoint, by their viewpoint. And, and if you allow yourself to be possessed, you, you cannot be yourself. So possession is not just about a demonic force. It's any force which relinquishes your to totality of your mastery of your own self. And your mind, and your mind, like what you said to Churchill's comment, that this is about your beliefs and your mind in, in this brainwashing. Like, how do we know, James, like what is true? People are so uh, just, I, I, they just don't even know, like, well, why isn't that true? Or how, how do you know what is true then? Because everything, you know, you turn on the news and everyone's saying the same thing and it's so consistent in the narrative and it's like, Okay, but this one says that, and then Amy says that, and it's like, how do we know what to believe? People are just overwhelmed, I think, and and it's not that they don't want to do the right thing. I think they just they don't know how to find the the real true answers, the truth, the truth, so they can take the good action, the moral action, and do what they feel in their heart is the best for all living creatures. There was uh, certain things come up in uh, in different times in relation to certain figures, or say, say for example, the uh, Elijah, the idea that God wasn't in the fire or in the God was in the still small voice, uh -huh. the still small voice, and you talked about the conscience mm -hmm. that this is in us. We have the capacity for navigation. How do birds fly back from the Sahara up to here during the? They have this uh, capacity to find to find the way. We have we have this as well. The universe didn't leave us uh, unmoored. It didn't leave us without moorings. We have this capacity, and a lot of that is an uncovering. And in many senses, uh, this is what apocalypse is about. Revelation. Revelation is in ourselves. And the revel revelation is about revealing what's there already. So uh, we do have the capacity. But, well, we don't have a television. I, I, I didn't want one for it. So we, we hadn't had a, never had a television here. Uh, and that helps. That helps, for example. Yes. It's a very it powerful does. force. I don't even People don't that. understand how powerful it is. Uh, years ago, I knew a hypnotist and I was asking him and he said, he explained to me about how powerful television is as a force of hypnosis. So I always had this interest in, in in the power of of hypnosis and people don't understand that they're in a trance they really do not understand and they'll say oh well that's arrogant of you to say so i don't say it to people but but really mm -hmm. they're in a trance so what happens is there is a choice this is the choice the humans 2.0 are not humans the beings which will be changed through intervention into position through this merging, they won't be humans. They will have given away their divine aspect, but that will be by choice. Now, it may not be, do you want to be a different? It's it's the choice of 
uh, it's debt by a thousand cuts. It's the toleration of a succession of pebbles building up until it becomes yep. a waste that breaks through. Boiling the, the frog. Yeah, it's exactly. Yeah, it, that's what it, it's the same process. So when the thing comes crashing down or when it's 99 degrees, you know, whose fault is it? You know, the, the poor old frog ca can't realize, but we can. So we have that capacity. The downside is we must take responsibility. So you're given a gift. You're given something which is the most precious thing in the universe. And you don't look after it. Your life. Can't complain. Your, your life. You your mean. consciousness. Yeah, okay. Your, 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 your spiritual consciousness. Mm -hmm. The thing that all the traditions say persists or is is bigger than you or is receptive or is powerful. You're saying, well, actually, I don't think that's as important as some kind of little machine that I can, you know, or some little mm -hmm. machine I can have in my hand. There's a, there's a I, I use the word, uh, as well as mechan mechanophilia, which is uh, classified as some kind of fetish. But I, I believe that there is a deep fetish associated with technology, a mass fetish about a love of technology, a love of oh. technology in a deep sense, a really deep sense that we don't understand. We failed to see that we're substituting uh, technology for humans. We're yes. formalizing informal relations. We're not value, valuing the interpersonal, the, 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 the human reaction. And that's a deep need in, in, in all humans, a deep need. in. Uh, I did a course in massage once where I was interested in alternative therapy. I, 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 at one stage, I said, oh, I could, I could go down the alternative, uh, the alternative health route uh, or, or write or paint or do a few things. And, and I was interested in massage. And it makes you aware of, uh, the power of the human body, the power of perception, the power of communication, yeah. the power of which, which you see, Feeling. and again in the in, in the tra the traditions, the laying on of hands and intuition, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. And people who realized what was happening, if you go back to uh, Jacques Ellul and Charbonneau, these were people that realized early on in France that technique was going to destroy us, meaning technology. And, Mm -hmm. all, all the thing together the technique will what they realized was that systems don't like the, anything that's organic so any technique of production will drive out organic things drive out the natural the living thing that's why we get all this uh, processed food and all that because it's easier to do things uh, mm -hmm. that way and what what they mentioned a number of times was the significance of the idea of incarnation, being in the flesh. This is what is 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 being attacked. Mm -hmm. So, the antidote in many senses is like what 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 you're emphasizing in holistic health. The antidote is to really begin to take ownership of our body, mind, and soul, or spirit, mm -hmm. uh, and in its relationship to other people. That's critical can't be a totally selfish thing. It has to be a basis of interrelationship with other people. And it has to be embodied in the environment. It has to function in the environment we were evolved to function in. Because if you look at all these people that talk about evolution, all those people are the ones that want to change evolution. They say, oh, you, you know, there's no meaning. You're accidental and we've evolved over millions of years. Haven't found that. Now we're going to change you, which is not evolution. That's not never. Uh, that's mm. not evolution. That's directed evolution. The eugenics. It's a movement yeah. away from the idea that we'll gradually transform to adapt to environment. No, they will change the environment. They are making. They are making. They will make the world artificial. The uh, another person. Yeah. Last point that corroborates this view is John C. Lilly, who, who, who the scientist and consciousness explorer. He developed the flotation tanks. He also worked on brainwashing for the American government. He also tried to develop interspecies communication with dolphins, a few, some questionable <laughs> experiments. But he said that what will happen, he's a, a scientist. He said that they will create a system. Now, he wasn't in favor of this, but he was just describing what he 
he, he believed was going to happen and he had some kind of communication with other intelligences. He said there was, there was forces in the world which want to transform the world into material things that the he envisaged a scenario where all the seas in the world would would be used, that the, the machine would grow so big that it would take all the resources uh, of, of the planet, the totality, uh, and that, well, humans would obviously disappear. Uh, another book, the man who wrote about Gaia, his last book before he died recently was about the Nova scene, where he said that humans are going to become plants as plants towards this new intelligence. So uh, that's why that's why spirituality is important. That's why. So so I don't want that. That's what they're saying. As you said, we have to be we have to face it. We have to be big boys and big girls or whatever big things we want to be or type of people. We have we have to face. This is what they're saying. This is what's happened. All that nice stuff, all that convenient stuff, all that quick stuff, all the futuristic stuff all the scientific stuff is leading to this it's not leading anywhere else it's not leading to a world of well smoke screens uh, even like the whole climate change and the green movement and even the transgender thing and it's like the breakup of the family and oh you, you they can vaccine not it's not a vaccine but they can give kids shots in school without telling their parents don't tell your parents i mean they're completely destroying and dismantling not only our self-identity, our self-concept, our intuition of our own self, but in our normal development, but just the, the whole family unit, like you said, I mean, that whole thing is, and you know, the social distancing, I mean, don't trust your neighbor telling your neighbor. I mean, it's, it's really kind of nuts. And the scariest thing is where, well, the hubris of it is alarming, you know, the complete disrespect for life and the sanctity of life. And basically playing God and removing the heart, the soul, the moral compass of all of these very advanced things that are going to be making decisions for us and which will put us in a second place. It's, uh, uh, you know, a, a robot and, and a, a software program doesn't have a moral compass, you know? Yeah. Uh, so what, so other than being, I know we're getting the end here. So other than, uh, can you be more specific in helping us be the mister, the master and the mistress of our universe? Like James, what, what would that really look like? And the person who's listening to this that says, look, I've got a nine to five job. I've got three kids. I want to be part of the solution before it's too late. Cause the water temperature, I feel it turning up and I'm the frog in the pot analogy. What, what what does that really look like? I have to cultivate a relationship with my own soul, so I have my own compass to check in with for what's right, to use my voice when it needs to be used for something I feel is not right. Like, wh what does this look like in everyday terms for us? Yeah, um, well, we can all find reasons to explain why we're straight jacketers and why we can't do things. Uh, what I'm saying is, there's not it's you know the 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 costs of that are too high now and yeah. we're talking not just about your job and that we're talking about uh, really existential issues about the continuation of the human species yeah I mean, they're telling us so okay those things are important but but what is it what are these things so important for us? So, so so yes of course there's all the reasons why we can't do it but that's your choice that's your choice in relation to do that. I'm not saying it's easy. But if you believe in something like an immortal soul or whatever like that, uh, you're not going to give it away easily. The What you have to do is find space somewhere. So you have to find space somewhere to change the disempowered picture, the constricted picture. So it may be a little space. Uh, I'll give you the example of I used to do. Uh, I had to give it up recently because because I just didn't have time with all the writing. But a little bit of judo and a little bit of Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Oh wow, cool! So, what's great about that is in certain positions, uh, you have to work with very small spaces. So, for example, and and what you have to do, and here's the paradox: in many contexts where you're in 
an emergency situation or a very difficult situation. The highest value is not uh, is not the flight panic mode, it's relaxation. Because when you're relaxed, you won't be getting into a disempowered position. Because you know, we know that animals freeze. Mm -hmm. We know that when you get tense, you can't function in the same way. So actually, you have to learn to relax. And that relaxation only comes about when you have some knowledge of what it is you're dealing with. So, for example, initially, when you start off uh, in, in these things, you know, you have a, you have a big person. I remember doing it a fellow, he was like, six foot ten or whatever, and they had a knee in your belly, and it's not comfortable. You know, it's not comfortable when some person is using all their might with will to seek to control you, for example. Or you get in the position where someone has their hand around your neck and, you know, the, you, you, you're just squeezing you and you, you have about six seconds or whatever before you, you go out. So when you're in that position, what you learn to do is to find the little space to begin to work out of the position, find where their arm is not in the right position or find it and begin to work in very incremental and small spaces. And from the movement from one space to another space, you create a bigger space for yourself to escape whatever threat it is. And knowledge of that, knowledge that you have strategies, abilities, capacities, means that you don't fear those things. Yeah. You can understand the nature of the operation of the force against you. You can understand the limitations of the power of the opponent. You can understand your own strengths. So it's the same thing in spirit in spiritual combat. So each individual firstly has to realize their spiritual beings, that they have to realize they have spiritual consciousness. But spiritual consciousness is the most powerful force in the universe. It's all that ever was, all that ever will be. And you're part of that. You have to resist the idea that you are a, a little accidental being that's disempowered. You have to activate uh, your spiritual conscious, meaning you have to believe in it. You have to believe that you're a special being. You have to believe that you are a special person, like all other divine creatures, like all other divine persons. Uh, and then you have to, uh, that's associated with realization of agency, uh, uh, as you say, and then you have to apply it in whatever way you can. Now, it might be a small way, so that's, that's what you're, you're talking about, or you're, I think, implying in relation to the application of it. you have to say okay well if i be, if i believe in this we have to begin to apply it in in our world in whatever whatever way and the intuition to do so only comes when you begin to believe and create the space so what happens is and this is the story of jo uh, like campbell talbot hero's journey once you say okay i'm i'm, I'm going on this journey here i've been called I'm being called to be a hero. I'm called to do this. Once you do so, certainly you'll encounter the struggles, but you'll also encounter the way forward. You will also, John C. Lilly, although he talked about the dark side, he also said that it was forces which were seeking to help, extraterrestrial forces which were seeking to help people. Mm -hmm. And they work through synchronicities. It's very, very strange. He said they work through synchronicities. Now, you might say, one might say, well, that's ridiculous, well, whatever. But the, you see the world in a different way and the meaningfulness emerges. I, for example, when I, when I went on my journey around uh, Europe, uh, I believed I, I would get a message about something. It was strange that I got three pieces of paper in different contexts and one sheet of paper with some kind of message. The last one was ridiculous. It was in Germany and there was a, a note I stopped accidentally uh, in uh, in, in a, a lay-by uh, and it said like for you and of course it could be left for anybody but it was a hand written what? with a page oh when God. i was in when i was in garabandal in spain a man came up with a letter it, it's a weird thing wow. but i expected those three things and in a is is it's it's a weird thing that's not rational so these yeah. things happen and also your it. intuitions get better it's very very strange yeah. Yep. The world then is counterintuitive because you've entered into a higher form of consciousness that doesn't work in the limited, rational, restrictive, reductive way. So what, what I'm saying is that the essence, 
I'm not saying forget about all the meditation things and all the things that they're, they're all great. You have to keep your, you have to look after your body. I, I like to swim in the lake, swim in the sea, walk, simple things. Um, I don't kill myself and I do things that I enjoy. Uh, and, and that gives me a relationship with the earth, et cetera, all, all that kind of stuff with being out in nature. Mm -hmm. So those things are obvious. We have to establish uh, our, our connection. But once we do, our intuition gets better. And then yeah. our heart power opens. That's what the word courage means. It comes mm. from the heart. That's what it is. Courage is, is a heart power. Now, what I realized in, in some of, of this journey recently in particular was that the feminine force, it sounds, it, it doesn't sound bad, bad, but it's not. The feminine force is non-intellectual in one aspect. Yeah. It just it, is. It's a it's, powerful yeah. heart force. It's, it's a being. It's a being. Things. It's an essence. Yeah. Uh -huh. yep. it, it, it's a it's a, it's a it's a thing that operates. And I've I've always felt that, and I've been surprised that women don't feel their own their own power because they've been tricked out yep. of their own power. Yep. So, uh, the 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 point is that it's beyond rationality. Rationality is a lower force. So, yeah. a lot of women don't realize that, and they don't believe that. So we have to believe in our own our own power. Now, it's not for us to explain everything in the whole universe. That's not the way it works. It's not for us to work out everything in the last detail. It's up to us to try in our own way, in our own limitations, to be conduits for the better angels of our nature, for our higher being, for the higher positive forces to work through us. Now that's not a relinquishing. That's not a relinquishing in the same way as you're relinquishing to a machine or to the humans. You're relinquishing to a higher, uh, higher force, and that's what, for example, in in the concept of is, in Islam is about submission. It's not submission in a pathetic way. It's about an opening, an opening to a higher force. That's what reception is in in the Kabbalah. It's about opening to a higher force, and that's where all the so what you're do, doing is escaping from the limitations of your own perceptions, circumstances, and conditions to be able to be your higher force. And once you do that, the energy of that is liberating, and it's it's beyond fear. So so the the fear element begins to disappear because fear is not more powerful than the idea of being uh, at peace with yourself of that power. That will that that that's a higher card. Than the fear card, which is powerful, but it's not it's not triumphant over that. So going back to the analogy of playing cards, all the higher cards are the control are in our control, you know. And and, and uh, although we may be playing in a stacked a stacked deck, as as Tom Wade said, um, uh, some places a royal flush never beat a pair. There's some the odds are stacked against us. It's not in spiritual terms. The, the 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 universe will reward that spiritual consciousness for doing this journey even though it's tough and even though it doesn't necessarily appear to help us in the short term or it it brings things that could be perceived as negative the other power is always going to justify uh, and take so this is a short answer find space look at your own power find ways to apply it and when you apply it, then it speaks to other people. And yes. you uh, showing yourself, showing who you are, begins to give other people the confidence. And that group, which I, uh, is, is not a huge group, can yeah. become bigger. And, and I, I, I've called a mystic right. murmuration. It will get bigger. It will assemble and it will get powerful. But they have to come out of that of that uh, shell they have to have confidence and they have to confront the forces that want to despiritualize dispirit demean dehumanize depersonalize us and you know are you familiar with mickey lewis's latest uh documentary on the great awakening um i i i, I I, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure. I, I, I may have looked. Uh, I, I, no, I can't say definitely. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I only ask because he refers to a concept he calls um, weaponizing compassion. 
And he talks about how a lot of what's going on right now is the powers that be that we're talking about in this show uh, are basically that's what they're doing is they're exploiting human, good human nature, good heartedness of people in, uh, you know, what this whole thing going on of people being afraid to speak out because they don't want to offend anybody or they don't want to be politically incorrect and then they get attacked. And, you know, I hear stories of parents going to, you know, school meetings and, uh, speaking up that they don't want like a transgender parading around a thong with their five-year-old and confusing them. And, and then they get completely attacked that they're being uh, homophobic. And so I don't want to get off on a complete tangent now that we're at the end of the show, but I'm just saying, I know a lot of people are afraid to, once they get in touch with their soul and their intuition, and, and they want to be the master of their own world and their own sphere of influence. But then because they're a good person, they don't want to offend anybody. So they kind of dial it back and they hold their tongue or, or, or whatever. And then, but what we're talking about is this is the 11th hour. This is the Hopi prophecy. This is the time that was predicted is going to happen. We don't have any more time to not speak up because it's, it, it, we don't want to be fatalistic, but you know, it, it's, it, shit's getting real, so to speak. So, um, just as we're closing here, um, any pep talk for us, like to, okay, but do it, speak your truth, um, get, establish that relationship with your soul. So you can speak your truth in love. Does that make sense? Like yeah. the, the, uh, the, the, a couple of points. Yeah. Uh, as Shakespeare said, or, or to paraphrase it, you know, the the brave person dies but once, but the coward dies a thousand times, okay? Mm -hmm. So, so uh, yes, uh, you can do that, except the consequences then of all the times yeah. that you didn't uh, speak. Okay, yeah. that, that, that's down to you. Uh, the when, when we talk about love, people really have forgotten about what love is. Uh, they have no idea, basically. That, 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 that's my view, because if you go back and look from a uh, thousands, of, thousands of years now from the discussions of what love is, there's different types of love, and they haven't, yep. they haven't distinguished different types like agape and eros, yep. and they get them mixed up, utterly different, utterly different. It takes a long time for people to understand the different types of love, and love has become, it has been a... Uh, that has been reprogrammed as well. If you look at from the 60s, mm. all you need is love, love. Love is something that happens on a Saturday night, mm. you know, after a few drinks. That, uh, this is really what it is. It, it was a, it was a, an effort, a successful effort yeah. to redirect the power of human love in its holistic, holistic sense, a to totally different thing. Wow. So, and in particular... I think you've talked about the father before and the father figure. Sure. Uh, what I noticed is that part of the movement has been to deny this tough love kind of thing. The idea yeah. that actually to love someone, you really have to sometimes appear to be not very nice. Yeah. <laughs> you have to, uh, you have to appear you have to focus on the aim and, you know, override short term context. Now, that doesn't that that doesn't appear to be loving in some way because they're confusing mm -hmm. love with indulgence. Yeah. You know, so as well as confusing love uh, with sex, for example, or, or love with, you know, with purely that. I'm not saying that, that they don't go together, but with, with confusing them or confusing it with indulgence. Uh, and being approved of or like, like it makes me think of my puppies, like tough love is hard for me as a mom because I know what's best for them, but it's not what they want sometimes, but I have to do it because I know I have to put that boundary down because that's me loving them. That's me yeah. protecting yeah. them sometimes. So yeah. yes, that's right. And and there's a, there's another word that, that, that came up again for me today, if it, maybe it's, it's for this context is the word uh, phronesis, uh, which was a, a part of there was different ideas of wisdom as well. And, and this was about, you had to have a sense of how to apply your wisdom in practical context. There's a mm -hmm. kind of space in which you're 
your intellectual thing is no good if you can't apply it in real world situations yes. you know so so that that that's a very important thing that med- mediation uh, thing is important but the yeah compassion if you like has been we- weaponized uh, and if compassion is not from the heart if it really is a reflex which is based on your desire to appeal to an apparently more powerful viewpoint well then it's not compassion at all it's that what's being weaponized is the appearance it's a simulacrum what they're doing is creating a, a, a false reality so the compassion becomes false love becomes false feminine masculine becomes false it's pseudo. creating a mm. thing for the for the new world order it's a total it's a total rewriting uh, and once the other the last point is that truth and meaning and love are things that are forces they're ultimately they are forces they're not intellectual things they're things you can feel on a deep physiological and spiritual level so they are forces that operate not transactions they're beyond that there may be transactional elements but uh they like the feminine energy it's an actual force and it's transformative mystical experience are forces truth is a force that gets body and and has its own nature it exists independently of our minds it can that's why we can receive it and become receptive so the uh Yes, uh, all those things, all those manipulations are going on. But uh, go with them. Go, go and be a go and acquiesce and all that. Now, of course, we have to be di- diplomatic. Sometimes we have to change our views. But there's a point. There's a limitation to that. There, there's a boundary to it, and the boundary condition uh, of taking of going into your spiritual domain is one that spiritual people won't accept. So they will die rather than than than, uh, than than yield their spirit, their autonomy, and they will die happily, uh, uh, you know, in that circle because that's what the condition of protecting your your spiritual conscience. I know I don't so, want anyone. I'm not going to be too miserable, but but I, 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 what I'm saying is, yeah. it's 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 serious, and the. As, uh, these monsters, th- there are monsters as well. They 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 are bigger than the, 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 they're not actually. When I go out in the world, I don't see the same things I hear about in other media contexts. It doesn't match that. So these are things which are created in our psyche. This force that we believe is there is not as powerful, and there's nothing more powerful than the power to say no. Mm. When you encounter yep. somebody that says no and means it, it's a powerful force. It's a very disruptive force. I'll get around, I've promised to do, or I've considered it for a long time, a book on 50 ways to say no. Uh, okay, we're going to hold you to it. How to say no, uh, because yes. people can't say no anymore. Boundaries, yes. Not able to say no. Not able to say no. They'll say no to certain things, but not to the big things. Yep. You know, they'll, they'll be taught to say no to things that are not as important yep. and not to say no to the big things and when other forces it's always been in all the traditions of uh, non-violent opposition of pacifism it's when someone says no and they really mean it that yep. that's when things change they really mean it and not not with violence not whatever but just the moral power the moral courage uh, and that moral courage, courage. That, that moral courage will sustain them in the darkest period that, that because in that is their own power of its own righteousness if you like that's what righteousness is uh, it's not anything moral that you go around banging the head on it's about your ability to be on the right path that's uh, true and that's very em- very powerful true embodiment uh, of empowerment when you feel, yes, you are solid, no one's going to be able to knock you over metaphorically or literally. When you're that centered in your your consciousness and your yes and your no, and that's it. 
yeah and you may suffer from it because people don't like hearing no they don't yep. like hearing uh it in certain contexts and you may suffer from it but you won't suffer spiritually and that's you're not difference. betraying yourself yourself no, we that's, abandon that's another, ourselves that's another archetype that, that I'm, I'm writing about as well but the oh. judas judas is the is the figure that 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 if you want to accept it as mythological, betrayal. I don't think it's mythological, yep. but if you want to in mythic terms, the betrayer and the betrayer yep. Uh, yep. is in us all. And uh, again, Shakespeare talked about being betrayed by doubt. Doubt is, is and that's what they're very good at creating doubt yes. in your mind. Uh, yes, to, yes, to, yes, yes. They put in little seeds of doubt, or oh, they may think this day will, and they're brilliant at doing that. They're brilliant yes. at manipulating your uh, your mind to make you doubtful so your uh, doubt goes out when you have filled yourself with your awareness of your spiritual consciousness and when you have when you have firsthand experience the gnosis with a g like you've you you you, you there is no doubt because i know i experienced it i felt it it was real for me so i have a gnosis and i'm that's empowerment that's right. You can feel it. I mean, I did uh, the first book on the mystical accord. The, the first lines came to me. I didn't consciously, I didn't consciously invent them. They came out of the blue, out of nowhere. I didn't. They just appeared to me. That's awesome. So, so I know that's strange. They, they they appeared. I love that. So that's awesome. Yeah, and, and that in itself proved yep. to me. Yep. It proved to me, and it continues to prove to me, and it continues to unfold mm -hmm. and there's nothing i'm not a perfect i make mistakes i'm not a perfect human being uh, ego peccator as they, they they used to say in latin i am a sinner no problem with that but i'm very content uh, on a deep level uh, with the meaning of of my life so I, I don't have any any doubt about that i don't have any doubt i can make mistakes get things wrong yeah. but i won't be wrong about the things that i've committed to mm -hmm. and the things that I, I i want to say i might get some perspectives that'll be different or but not at not at the heart we're, we're we're meant to evolve spiritually not meant to evolve into machines we're meant to evolve spiritually mm -hmm. to have an efflorescence to grow to our fullest capacity to apply it to understand it and a thing that a lot of people don't understand sometimes because I talk about these things is that I don't think this is a, a lot of people have got into a, a belief which is Gnostic with a capital G that this is a horrible world, that the physical world is terrible. I don't believe oh. that at all. I believe that it's a, a beautiful world, the most beautiful world, that we have to improve our capacity to appreciate it, to look around us, to look at the beauty, absolute uh, everyday beauty every day it's, it's all yes. there for us that we have to take away the scales from our eyes and and see it and to open our spiritual eyes uh, and the uh, the pep talk uh, 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 as you said I, i'd forgotten it was mm -hmm. that everything is there for you the earth yeah. is there for you the universe is there for you your spiritual consciousness is there the ability of your spiritual consciousness to connect with the better angels of our, of our nature your own guardian angel your own yeah. higher being of light is there that's what you have to do each one has that that's there that's connected to the great memory the great mind you have that capacity but what you have to do is not be fooled by, by the the tricksters or the stage magicians that want to convince you that you are this simulacrum they have created of you. And in that realization, you will find the power. And it's more powerful. It's always more powerful. If if you need to, you remind yourself that it is the essence. It is the top. It's the trump card. It's the, it's, it's the peak. That's there for you. you. You have it. All you have to do is become aware of your awareness, to respect it, to to uh, allow it to worship the things it should worship to not fall for idols that are not about the the the, the consciousness and once we do so then our unique gifts will, will will come forward your unique gifts will come forward and they will be different from the things that i can say your perspectives your particular nuance the meaning of your life in many senses things that we don't understand in our life they're the things that give us power 
our opponents give us power. They, they make us, like contrast makes us see things. We learn from what they do, what they're, what's wrong. We learn from the mistakes we've made. They're all, in many senses, things that we can draw power from and give us meaning and give us fuel in relation to uh, deal with the challenges. And we have a great resilience, a great capacity, and a great awareness, a great inbuilt awareness that's, that's built up ancestrally from ancient times, from our origins, from divine consciousness, that is self-correcting, that, that gives a, 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 an ability to ourselves to cor correct ourselves and to provide solutions. Uh, creativity and compassion are the two are the two features of all spiritual tradition. We have the creativity. We have to now apply it, unleash it, find it, explore it, be bold, be imaginative, be uh, non-judgmental. Not about everything, uh, but about people that are are, are are trying to do those things. Look at what, listen to what they're saying, disagree with, them, agree with them. Look at the best options. Look at solutions. Be willing to let go. Be willing to move on. But always committing ourselves to our divine spirit. Oh, that's just so eloquently said and so so comprehensively, succinctly said. I just, I'm just so deeply grateful. This has been a powerful show. And I'll just reiterate, to bring this full circle where we started for the audience, it all begins with us saying yes and opening ourselves yeah. to it, taking that step forward towards it and remembering that you don't need to, anyone else to be the facilitator for you. So if someone's yeah. telling you, oh, you need this or whatever, this is going to make you better and, you know, implant this in your brain or whatever, you know, it's like, no, it just means you stepping out in nature and establishing your own relationship with your soul, yourself, our source, your source, your power, and just that personal relationship of an experience, just like any other relationship. It just takes time and attention. That's what a, that's what cultivates a relationship, time and attention and intention, attention, intention, attention, and having it. And, and then watch it happen, right? Watch the miracles unfold as you develop that relationship. Exactly. James, this has been just... One of my favorite episodes, so powerful, so important. I know I could keep you for hours and hours. You've got four phenomenal books. You just mentioned a fifth one coming on all the ways to say no yeah. and why you need to. What else is coming down the pike for you? And where can people find more of James Tunney? I think it's actually nine books now. Uh, Come I've, on. Um, oh, yeah. gosh. I, I, nine. I, I, I've got, I've got on me. four in a series four. of the misery ones. Oh, that must be what ones. I've Okay, yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. Okay, uh, nine. Ones, the, All right. Yeah, the ones on the dark side, uh, that series. Okay, um, yeah. But I, I've the most recent one was a book of poetry called um, Mystic Murmurations, which oh. is uh, just of, of poetry. Uh, so I I have a series of, of books, some which continues the explanation, trying to say it in a better way. To, you have to deal with different audiences. Uh, some have to be complex in order to speak to people that want it at that level. And I try and refine it as well to make it, because um, people say to me, well, I don't really understand all, all that fair enough, uh, but they will understand it, unfortunately, in the future. Um, uh, but I, I will try and re refine that message. And then the books which explain the positive side, the really the origin of it, about your own mystical nature, the uh, power that we have to to to, to make change uh, that that I believe is available to everybody. Uh, it's it's written in us. It's inscribed in us. It's not it's not left to strange people living in caves. Everyone has it. It doesn't matter in many senses. It doesn't matter whether you're a householder. This was a respectable spiritual path in 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 uh, in many traditions. It's not. It doesn't have to be. Uh, ascetic or, 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 or whatever, uh, and in many senses, I met one of the one of the women who was at Garabandal, who in the apparitions of the uh, the Virgin Mary in Spain in the sixties, uh, and she she had a family and, and moved to America, and as, as they all did, they didn't end up in as nuns or anything like that. So, so uh, 
in our own lives we, we have to find space so yeah i have a, a website james tony.com i don't use any other there's other i don't use any other uh social, uh, social media. media yeah um but uh yeah Your website. I, 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 i'll continue doing the doing the grim stuff and doing the, the light and dark stuff they go together we can't we can't get away from it and sometimes sometimes the reason why we're doing what we're doing or why you're doing what you're doing uh, is only explicable by looking at what the alternative is yeah. and that that's why they, 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 they go together but uh yeah thank you uh for the conversation for the invitation and the conversation uh you seem like a lovely person and and, and you are and i appreciate your uh conversation the conversation beforehand uh and your uh i can sense uh your spirit and that's powerful as well because we all need people uh, in a constellation around us to keep us going and yeah. uh, we yeah. can uh, support each other uh, in that sense and we can support each other in an invisible sense at a distance this is yes. the power of, of the human the human mind and i i describe it in terms of, of the mystic murmuration as a, a flock of birds that can move in unison they move uh according to scientists one influences seven around them so that's how they can move so one gives a little signal and seven around that will move and that's yeah. how they move so or schools will... of fish yes good yeah exactly yeah. Mm -hmm. so what we do in our own little movement will influence the seven people around us so you do something different you give some example you act different you say no you say yes whatever will influence someone else to say well i'm not going i'm not agreeing with that uh, and this is the way it will work and various leaders in their own way across all races religions or gender whatever any of that whoever they are don't we we, we can't alienate anybody because some of the people as well that have had views that are inconsistent with our own are the people that are going to understand these things better than us to have gone through the journey uh, as well so we should be open uh, but begin to recognize people there is this long tradition uh, in ideas of the congregation of light written about a few hundred years ago that at a certain stage people would come together uh, in a group it wouldn't be formal or whatever but they would recognize other people who are in the group mm -hmm. uh, and they would be that would be a mystical a mystical it's called the great awakening um it, it, it's a deeper it's a deeper idea than that it's not an intellectual thing it's, it's almost like a deja vu like a familiarity uh, like, yeah yeah it's a recognition yeah. uh, uh -huh. that's right and it's it's caused when one moves like the birds flying to a higher level and they see other people in that space uh, in that context yeah. and they then they begin to correspond coordinate uh you know align and, and it's very empowering like i really feel like i just had a very nourishing meal this conversation was soul food for me this was cuz i kind of live a little bit of an isolated life i actually live alone and right now I'm single. I have my dogs and uh, I'm kind of in an area, let's just say that a lot of people don't agree with the way I, well, let's see the brainwashing thing. And I've, this whole conversation, they'd never listen to the show, let's mm. just say, mm. you know, mm. so I can sometimes find myself a little bit isolated and feel like, oh my gosh, am I like on an emotional island? So I just have to interject that. And for those listening, maybe you feel that way too, a little bit. And I, I'm totally agreeing with you, James, that this we're finding our people and there's there's people out there if you're listening and you felt like i have that no there you're not alone there you'll you're gonna find we're gonna find each other and and yeah. listening to this has 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 given me nutrition has has yeah. empowered me and i've never met you in person and we're how many yeah. thousands of miles away so hopefully yeah, yeah uh, and, and, and you... vice versa and your okay good your thought before the show as well spoke uh -huh. to me and and, and the, what 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 happens is that you be you know you know remote viewing etc one does establish transcendent bonds across across time and space this is important people don't may not believe in that and that's again related to believing in the power of your own 
spiritual uh, yeah. force and, and committing to that. And then the universe, uh, the universe responds. Uh, it begins to infuse uh, uh, power, uh, power into it. So yeah, I, I, I'm very glad. It's a vice, vice versa. I, I, I feel the same thing. So I appreciate the conversation, and it's very, very necessary that we Thank understand you. that there is this uh, positive transformation, and it's mm -hmm. meant to be. And yep. Uh, yep. a lot of people may not go along with it. Yeah. That's up to them. That's their That's choice. Okay. Yep. And That's this okay. Is, yeah. But but uh, for those who, thing... who need it, great. And yeah. those who don't, yeah. great too. It's all no. great. And it's our own choice. Yeah. Yeah. The only difference is, is that we're not going to the same in the same direction. The roads are splitting. Yes. Uh, and, and that was uh, the Hopi that, prophecy. That is... Yep. It's going to yeah. split. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So so there's no question about that. So yeah. uh, uh, I wouldn't underestimate the. Uh, the gravity of people's choice, yep. uh, but but again, it's it's up to it's up to people uh, themselves uh, to align. And the the great the last point, the great uh, people like William Blake and that the future was the imagination. And this seemed this is is reduced, but it, the future is this is exploring this space of interconnection, and this will be part of the next stage of evolution where closer contacts uh, with people would begin to re-establish powers that we had which of course is what they're trying to thwart with all this electronic soup around us but uh, we really have to have to believe in that so yeah uh, I hope the message was was empowering beyond any of, of, of the darkness and it really sure was for me it sure that's that's what i'm saying for me it, it really was and i mean it just I, I just love it so much and it's so beautiful to to be able to go there with a guest because you know like i said in the beginning i knew this was going to be very deep um mm. but it, it it really gives credence to this collective intelligence this this non-linear connection that we have that isn't about the time space continuum it's beyond that you no. know and the no. ancients knew it i mean they practiced it with even in, in egypt in egypt they you know they they didn't believe in in linear time you know they, no. they it was we talk about that one episode 148 with dr ibrahim kareem of biogeometry no. um stacked time versus linear time and you know, getting out of this this fixed mentality. So we just demonstrated that basically. Which I is, hope so. I hope so. Yeah. yeah. And, thank and you. A connection above uh, happened. So yeah. Thank you very much, and, and I enjoyed the conversation. Okay. Oh, thank you so much, everybody. Please check out James's website, his nine books, and tenth forthcoming, hopefully soon. Mm -hmm. That's in the show notes if you're not able to, uh, you know, write it down at the moment. And uh, if you enjoyed the show, you know what to do. Please subscribe, share it with somebody that you think needs to hear it, and it might help. And if you want to go to the next level, you can leave a review for me. That would be very much appreciated. Check out my website, amyfornier.com. I've got all my favorite products there with coupon codes if you want to save a few bucks. And uh, I'm already looking forward to seeing everybody next time. James, thank you so much again. Thanks, Amy. Thank you. Okay. Bye, everybody. Would you like to support my mission to help empower people all over the world to be all of who they truly are? If so, please subscribe to the show, leave a review on iTunes, and share it with a friend. And if you're looking to take immediate action to align your energy and optimize your health, visit amyfornier.com. Thanks for listening to Awakening Aphrodite. Let's awaken her together in you. I'm your hostess, Amy Fournier, and I already can't wait to be with you again and for you to hear what I have planned for the next show. Thanks for listening to Awakening Aphrodite with Amy Fournier. To learn more about Amy, check out her website, amyfournier.com. That's A-M-Y-F-O-U-R-N-I-E-R.com. You can also check out Amy's live and on-demand virtual fitness and yoga classes and sign up for her newsletter to receive a free mini ebook of three of her top tips for making holistic health a lifestyle. Again, that's amyfournier.com and get your ebook sent to your email immediately. Connect with Amy on the daily on Instagram at FitAmyTV, F-I-T-A-M-Y-T-V. 
and watch many of the podcast episodes and subtopic clips on her YouTube channel, which is also Fit Amy TV. Enjoy, and we'll see you next time on Awakening Aphrodite.